In this section, we introduce the predicates that we will be using. For example, consider the factorial program. To express its intended behavior, we will have a specification at the initial node and at the final node. At the initial node, we say that x is equal to some n that is not negative. At the final node, we say that we expect y to be the factorial of n. The last block reminds us of the definition of the mathematical notion of factorial. Let us look at a more complex example, namely that of insertion sort. The predicate at the initial node simply gives us another name for the original array A. The predicate at the final node then says that the array has been sorted and is a permuted version of the original array. To make this clear, we need to define the abbreviation of what it means for an array to be sorted. And we also need to explain what it means for the array to be a permuted version of the original one. This is a somewhat complex formula using an existential quantifier ranging over a permutation pi. That's a bijective function over the indices of the array. The mathematical notations we will use in predicates is plentiful. Existential and universal quantifiers, mathematical functions like factorial, some predefined predicates like sorted and permuted, logical variables, those are the ones we have underlined, and they will not be used in the program, and so they never change their values. And of course, we can use the variables from the program. We can give a partial BNF syntax for these constructs. The Greek letter phi gives us the formulae, with E giving us some general expressions. The color code tells us that the black constructs are the ones we also find in guarded commands, whereas the red ones are the ones only allowed in predicates. To describe the meaning of a formula, we need a concrete memory, but also a virtual memory for the logical variables. The formal definition of this satisfaction relation is in the book. You should now read the section of the book doing the try it out on the wing.